For Socrates, philosophy is not just a mental exercise, but a way of life. Born in Athens in 4070 BC, he dedicated himself entirely to philosophy. Though he learned stonemasonry from his father, he rarely worked in that profession. Instead, he spent most of his days at the market hill in Athens called the Agora, engaging in conversations with his fellow citizens. Socrates loved to engage in conversations about human matters, examining what is beautiful, shameful, just and unjust, as well as understanding wisdom and foolishness, bravery and cowardice, and other similar topics. According to his belief, knowing about these things makes someone a noble person. The main topics of his discussions were almost always human virtues, such as justice, wisdom or bravery. Socrates wanted to find out what these virtues really meant, because only by knowing this one could act accordingly and be a noble person. That's why he repeatedly asked what questions. What is justice really? What do we mean by wisdom? What do we imply when we talk about bravery? In essence, Socrates aimed to analyze and clarify these concepts. Since then, such conceptual clarification has been the main focus of philosophy. Socrates' approach to conversations was fascinating. Despite being considered the wisest Greek as predicted by the Oracle of Delphi, he didn't force his knowledge onto others. Instead, he wanted to learn from them. Socrates compares the philosopher to Eros, the Greek god of love. For Eros, the essence of love is not to possess the beloved beauty, but the pursuit and longing for it. Similarly, the philosopher's love for wisdom is a journey of seeking and yearning. The philosopher glimpses or senses wisdom in the distance, falls in love with it and sets out to find it. Socrates used his approach, especially at the marketplace in Athens, where he constantly asked questions to seek understanding. Socrates believed the people already had knowledge within them, and his role was to help bring it to the surface rather than teach from outside. Unfortunately, the conversations on the Agora rarely achieved the intended results, even though Socrates chose experts as his conversation partners. For example, to discuss piety, he talked to a priest. To discuss justice, he asked a statesman, and for bravery, he approached a military commander. Facing Socrates' persistent inquiries, his conversation partners repeatedly found themselves in a difficult position and had to admit that they had no answers. Since Socrates himself did not claim to know more than his conversation partners, most of the dialogues ended without a solution. They did not uncover the true nature of piety, bravery or wisdom. But Socrates accepted this outcome without any hesitation. Despite being a great philosopher, he did not try to appear superior or offer convenient answers. He considered these non-results as valuable. His most famous statement, I know that I know nothing, captures his perspective. Socrates believed that the Oracle of Delphi named him the wisest among the Greeks not because he knew more than others, but because he recognized his own ignorance and understood that he knew very little, if anything, at all. For Socrates, exposing the limits of human knowledge and challenging false beliefs was more than enough, because he aimed to create space for acquiring true and securely grounded knowledge, thereby paving the way for the philosophers who came after him. Indeed, in the works of Plato, Aristotle and most other later philosophers, we find more answers and fewer questions compared to Socrates. However, even in modern times, one of the most important tasks of philosophy remains to challenge seemingly self-evident knowledge and question supposedly secure convictions. This is especially crucial because we often become complacent in our beliefs. Even Nietzsche reinforced the importance of questioning self-evident knowledge hundreds of years later with his concept of the transvaluation of values. For an in-depth exploration of Nietzsche's concept, check out our video on the topic. You can find the link in the video description. 
Many fellow citizens of Socrates found his philosophical method quite bothersome. Not everyone appreciated his questioning that exposed their ignorance, leading to unfriendly reactions. Some even ridiculed Socrates for his peculiar questions, insulted him and even physically attacked him. Despite Socrates' popularity in leading circles of Athens, the sentiment gradually turned against him. Eventually, in the year 399 BC, he was brought to trial. Political interests might have played a role, but the primary concern was undoubtedly the unease caused by Socrates' philosophical activities. His questioning challenged the familiar, traditional and seemingly secure knowledge, putting long-held beliefs into question. Socrates' accusers cited two impious acts, failing to acknowledge the gods that the city acknowledges and introducing new deities. Socrates' death was the result of his asking philosophical questions. Socrates was ultimately sentenced to death by drinking a poisonous liquid. In ancient Athens, it was common for those sentenced to death to escape from prison if they had wealthy and influential friends. Socrates had such friends, and he could have fled, but he refused. He explained to his friend Crito that he had always respected the laws throughout his life, and he would continue to do so even in the face of death, even though he believed that injustice was done to him. He argued that it was better to suffer injustice than to commit injustice. Consequently, Socrates died in the presence of his friends at the age of 71. Socrates approached his death with great calm because he believed that philosophy prepared him for it. He explained this perspective in a conversation he had in prison with his friend Simeas shortly before his execution. He believed that a philosopher separates the body and the soul in their consciousness during life to think without distractions by bodily needs. This way, they already anticipate what will happen in death. Therefore, Socrates felt prepared for death, facing it with composure and courage. He viewed philosophy as a way to mentally prepare for death by focusing on the soul and distancing himself from bodily concerns. Socrates did not leave behind any written philosophical teachings or records himself. Everything we know about him and his philosophy comes from the writings of his friends and students, with Plato being the main source. However, it's uncertain whether the Socrates in Plato's dialogues is the historical figure or a literary creation used to express Plato's own ideas. This is known as the Socratic problem and is still debated among scholars today. We have seen that Socrates' way of life was deeply philosophical. His dedication to philosophical investigations, his detachment from material possessions, and his self-control in the face of external experiences. We have learned that philosophy begins with asking questions, often without necessarily reaching definitive answers, and being willing to accept that. Socrates emphasized the importance of caring for our souls and the way we lead our lives. He urged people to prioritize the well-being of their souls over material wealth believing that virtue and moral goodness are more valuable than riches. As the founder of ethics, Socrates taught about living a morally good life. He didn't give easy advice, but encouraged people to reflect on themselves and their lives. He even said during his trial, the unexamined life is not worth living.